Acts chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass, says Peter, quoting Joel, that whoever calls on the name of the Lord, in Joel it is Yahweh, in the Greek it is Kyrios, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, remember me, when you come into your kingdom today, you shall be with me in paradise. Do you know the name of the Father and his Son's name? Tell me if you know. I'm not asking you if you know the name of a celebrity shack or a TT racer or a famous snooker player or a famous politician. I'm asking you if you know the name of the Father and his Son. Then he goes on. He says here, men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth. Right next to whoever calls on the name of the Lord. Jesus of Nazareth. And so the Pharisees say, do not teach in that name. We'll let you go, but do not teach in that name. Don't proclaim that name. Acts, Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Let's go to verse, from verse 10. Let it be known to you all. And to all the people of Israel, Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead by him, this man stands before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 14 Yahweh tells us that he is the stone this is the stone that the builders rejected do you know the name of his father and his son's name tell me if you know verse 12 nor is there salvation in Isaiah 45 Yahweh says there is one saviour, there is one that saves, and it is I, says Yahweh. What does it say here? Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which they must be saved. There's only one name. There's only one name. There's not a list. You don't have a choice. It's not multiple choice, A, B, C, or D. Tick the right box, have a go. There's one name by which we must be saved. Romans chapter nine, 10, verse 9. For the scriptures, oh, I'm going from verse 9, yeah. Romans 10, 9. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says. Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all. Who call upon him for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. We're getting there. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and has given him the name that is above. Every other name, that at the name of Yeshua, every knee should bow, of those in heaven, on those on earth, and those under the earth. And by the way, it says in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6, let the angels worship him. 
that the angels worship him. Je Jehovah's Witnesses tell us that Jesus is not God. Well, if you receive worship and you're not God, you've broken the first and second of God's commandments. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 6 says, let all the angels worship him. Here it says, every knee shall bow under heaven, on the earth, above the heaven. Let every knee bow. Who's saying this? That Jesus Christ is Lord. Who's saying it? Turn to Isaiah chapter 45 verse 22. There is no other God beside me. A just God and a saviour. There is none beside me. Look to me and be saved. All the ends of the earth. For I am God. And there is no other. I have sworn by myself. The word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness. And shall not return. That to me every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall take an oath. And say surely in the Lord. I have righteousness and strength. Who is speaking? Who is the one to whom every knee shall bow? Yahweh. Yahweh. And in Philippians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul makes this astonishing claim that Jesus Christ is Yahweh of the Old Testament. And every knee will bow to him. Let every angel bow. Do you get it, folks? How awesome our Lord is, the Lord Yeshua. With this in mind, let's turn to one last scripture, Acts chapter 9, very quickly. Then Saul... Still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord went to the high priest. He knew the high priest. He could name drop the high priest. Do you know Ananias? Do you, do you know them? Caiaphas? I know them. He could name drop the high priest. He knew them by name and they knew him. But he didn't know the name of Jesus. He didn't know Yahweh. He knew the high priest. You can be in church. We're just as bad in church sometimes. Do you know this one? Brilliant, they are. Do you know this worship leader? Magnificent, they are. Do you know the name of the Father? And do you know his son? Tell me if you know. He knew the high priest. He was... In on the in crowd, and he asked for letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus. That's Syria. <clears throat> Jesus said, This gospel shall go from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the uttermost ends of the earth. And Saul wanted to stop the Great Commission because he was convinced that Jesus was just a man and therefore this movement was blasphemy. And with every fibre of his being, with all the effort that he could conjure, he went to drag them back and torture them and even get them to blaspheme the name of God. He had been so convinced of something and God suddenly says to you, you got this all wrong. He wanted to bring them back bound to Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, Syria. And suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. And it tells us in the Old Testament... That God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. That God is the light upon the Gentiles. He's the light upon the Jews. He is light. In fact, he says that the sun is ashamed of the light of God. The sun hides its nakedness when it sees the light of Yahweh. And 
suddenly the light of the whole Old Testament, the whole weight of the canon of Scripture shines upon Saul. And he's knocked off his donkey. He fell to the ground. You want to see worship, folks, real worship? He fell to the ground. And he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? The light. The light of the canon of scripture. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Why are you persecuting me? Have you ever tried to beat up somebody five times your size? They just pat you on the head and say, God bless you. <laughs> Why are you persecuting me? It says later on in the book of Acts, is it hard for you to kick against your own conscience? Is it hurting you? <clears throat> you know there's something going on in your conscience that is telling you that these people are right and yet you want to drag them and torture them. It's hard for you, isn't it, Saul? It's hard for you. Friends, you cannot fight against the Almighty. You can't. A great light shone. Isaiah chapter 61, a great light will shine. Isaiah chapter 9, a great light will shine. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You're not to hide that light under a bushel. You're to go and tell people about Jesus Christ. It's your job. You are the light of the world. And so, says, who are you, Lord? Sir, it's a low word for Lord. Who are you, sir? And the Lord said, Kyrios, and the Lord said, I am Jesus. I am Jesus. I believe that his whole life fell to pieces at that very moment. All the scaffold that he had around him, every bit of strength that he had, was dissipated in an instant. That this Jesus that he hated, that if he could get hold of, he'd stone himself. That this Jesus, this Jesus, a common name given in Israel at the time, Yeshua. Yeshua. Which means Yahweh saves. That this Jesus, this Yahweh who saves, was the fulfillment of all Old Testament prophecy. He was God in flesh. And when the Apostle Paul, years later, wanted to train the best young man that he had, and he explained to him what it means to be a Christian, straight after that, he said to him, the one that would pastor his greatest work, Ephesus, the one that he was risking the second generation on, he said, great is the mystery of godliness, for God was manifested in the flesh and his name is Jesus and this Jesus went to the cross Ross. hallelujah Hands that flung stars into space. Mm. To cruel nails surrendered. Mm. This is our God, mm. the servant king.